Moving on to um, Arbolo, which is the other Peak District Henge. Um, you can see it's uh, a bit more of an open setting than the bull ring. Um, this shows you a location map. You can see on the left that this road leads westwards to the A515, which is the road between Buxton and Ashbourne. Um, and this way, it's to the village of Yulgrave. Um, and it's uh, in a field, uh, in a privately owned, um, the access routes are privately owned um, to, get, to get to visit it. Um, it's situated high on Middleton Common, um, again on a slight slope like the Bull Ring, but this time with, with panoramic views. And the name Arbolo is probably of Saxon origin and simply means the earthwork mound. If we look at the, map, the plan of, the, uh, of Arbolo, again it also consists of an almost circular bank and a slightly oval internal ditch. This time the entrances are orientated northwest and south southeast, so they're not quite opposite each other. Uh, and the inner area here is 40 by 52 metres, so slightly smaller than the boring. There's also, uh, down in the southeast corner, there's a, there's a bowl barrow, and that was uh, dug by Bateman, Thomas Bateman, in 1845. <coughs> okay. uh, the big difference to the bull ring, as I mentioned before, is that there are about 50 stones at Arbolo forming a rough circle inside the henge. Some of these are fragments of stones, so perhaps they could have been put together. So perhaps originally... Um, there were 41 to 43 stones in the circle. Almost all the stones um, lie flat um, rather than standing, um, but there are stumps in the ground that indicate um, that the stones were standing in the past and they would have stood about head height. But I suppose that depends how high your head is, doesn't it? <laughs> um, there's another stone setting in the centre um, that's known as the cove. Um, and that may have been rectangular in the past with at least six stones, but some of those are, are missing now. Um, abutting the bank uh, to the south-southwest is a low bank and ditch known as the Avenue, and that runs for 150 metres, then it reappears after a gap of 70 metres before turning west. So that indicates that perhaps Arbolo was part of a... there was, Or at least what's remaining, there's more of a sort of ceremonial complex there. Um, the dating at Arbolo, we know that the henge was created in the later Neolithic um, and that the stone circles and the other stone settings, they're likely to have been put in place after the actual creation of the henge. The barrow um, was built after the henge as part of it, um, as part of the henge bank was demolished to provide material for the barrow. Investigations at the Bull Ring. Um, the, just to mention the historical nature of these photographs are because these are photographs mostly from our own collections, the museum's collections, which is why most of them um, are not modern photographs. This is in fact a photograph from January 1903, um, which would have been um, not long after um, the Henge was partly excavated um, by Gray. He excavated it in 1901-2. And he found flints, including tanged and barbed arrowheads and leaf-shaped arrowheads, and also the remains of some ox and antler. Um, it had been investigated before then, but the early excavations were poorly recorded, so we don't really know very much details about what they found. Um, the barrow, as I mentioned, um, was dug by Bateman in 1845, and he found a limestone, limestone um, cyst, so a box a coffin made of limestone um, that had burnt and scattered human bones inside it and also two pots um, which are now thought to be later Neolithic pots which indicates rather than early Bronze Age pots which indicates the barrow is perhaps earlier um, than we had previously thought. The majority of the henge remains unexcavated um, but field walking um, over a number of years has revealed extensive multi-period flints um, in the fields close by so it indicates used for a long time um, lots of evidence that it wasn't just used at one point 
And there was also a geophysical survey carried out in the late 1990s. I'm not going to say much about that because I thought I might leave more detail for my, the subsequent talks. And just a couple more pictures. This shows you that it's really quite a substantial um, bank um, at Arbolo. And this also a photograph from the 1920s shows you that tourists have been visiting it for a very long time. Okay. So if we think about um, the bull ring and Arbolo together, um, the, their scale, the size of them, suggests they were built and used by large populations. Um, one idea is that Arbolo um, served the southern half of the population of the limestone plateau, and the bull ring served the northern half, um, if you take the river Y as the dividing line. No way of, of proving that, it's, but um, it's a possibility. Um, because so, and this use by large populations um, is probably the reason that they're larger, rather than they're necessarily more important ceremonially. Um, and it's unlikely that there were further large sites elsewhere on the limestone plateau, um, simply because there's been no trace of them found, and given the size of them, the scale of them, it would be um, unlikely that they would have been completely wiped out by agriculture. Um, even the bull ring has survived being messed around with quite a lot. Uh, so, just to finish, let's take a quick look at a couple of other stone circles in the Peak District. The first one is, is Nine Ladies, which is down here on Stanton Moor. Again, I'm mentioning this one because it's quite a, an iconic one, one that people have, have often visited. And this one, it uh, lies amongst trees, but again, it's high up on Stanton Moor, and it forms part of a line of ceremonial sites which cross the moor. It consists of 10 stones on the inner edge of a bank. Um, this time, the circle is 11 by um, 10 metres, so a lot smaller than the bull ring or arbolo. And for this one, it's quite a good news story in that there hasn't been a lot of change to it since it was first recorded in 1782 by Rook, although because it's quite a popular site, um, it has led some, the numbers of visitors has led to some problems with erosion, so it's certainly one that's been looked at, um, kept quite a close eye on. The other circle I'd like to have a look at is Nine Stone Close, which as you can see is quite close to Stanton Moor. And this one stands on Hart Hill Moor at um, 230 metres above sea level. Only four stones remain from this of what was once a 45 foot circle of stones. And the stones are the tallest ones in Derbyshire. Um, they range from 1.2 metres uh, to 2.1 metres, which is four to seven feet in height. And um, although they look quite impressive, um, they were re-erected in the 1930s. So some of them are, are set in concrete. Um, which probably wouldn't be best practice today. And this monument's also known as the Grey Ladies because the, sto the stones are supposed to represent ladies who dance at midnight. So just to finish off, I've included a slide with my contact details here. I've also brought some finds um, that we have at the museum from the Bull Ring and from our below. They're in um, the small display case at the back. Um, do come and find me if you have any questions and do come to the museum um, to have a look at more things that we've got on display. Um, as usual with museums, the things I've been able to bring are not the nicest things because the nicest things are in our permanent displays. So these are the things that are in the stores that I've brought with me today. So, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Martha. That's f some fascinating archive photos there. Thank you very much for doing that. Well, we have got a, a packed program for you today, as they say. Uh, talks running through until 6 p.m. Uh, the next talk is going to be at 1.45, which is... Uh, uh, more archaeology of the Henge. It'll be Kirsty Whittle talking about the, the most recent survey results. Uh, we've also got food, as you've seen. We've got a display of uh, fantastic Neolithic and other uh, axes and other artefacts down there. Uh, they've got the Henge to enjoy. We have a gallery which has been set up. Is, so have a look for the gallery. The next speaker will be 1.45. Thank you.